High school sports, we've got it covered. Overtime starts now. Hello everyone, welcome to Overtime. I'm Scott Leber. And I'm Reagan Holgate, and we are pretty excited about this show that we have for you tonight. We are going to spotlight a young man at Rockford Lutheran who's one of the most versatile players ever to come through Rockford, Vontez Dent. And I'll sit down with Belvedere North boys coach Todd Brannon. His Blue Thunder are putting together the most successful season in Belvedere North history. But first, let's get to those highlights. Auburn and Boylan are two teams that are trying to get on an upswing as tournament time approaches. In years past, this would have been a no-brainer game of the week. Typically, Auburn and Boylan are right there battling for the conference championship, but they have both hit some bumps in the road this season. However, there's still time, though, for these two teams to get clicking, and there's certainly talent on these two teams. So let's head to Boylan for the Gillies. Heating an air conditioning game of the week. Great to see a nice crowd for this one. Boy, did the Knights come out with energy tonight. They scored the first 11 points of the game. Amir Danforth driving and getting that hoop. Rakeem Chaney then with a nice bounce feed inside to Tazir Henderson. But the Titans did not fold, but just the opposite. Johnny Crestus getting that hoop. Philip Dixon then pushing the pace. He's going to pull up and make the backboard his friend. Ryan Stark played an excellent game for Boylan. He had the shooter's touch going. Now watch him come right back here with a steal. And Stark will bury another three. Stark scored 18 points. Amir Danforth going to make one of those special Danforth drives. Just crossing over left and right. Oh my, he scored 21 points. To the second half we go, and a heck of a move coming up here by Luke Warner to spring himself for the Boylan basket. Chaney then going to make a pretty hook pass to Keon Leach for the lay-in. Champ Parker getting into the act here. He drops in three. Then it's Parker on the fast break. He's got Myquan Marshall, and the talented sophomore will finish it off. The Knights won this game big, 72-51. to It was exactly the type of game they needed. We needed it real bad. Like, we've been working for it. We've been falling off a little bit, but now we're back standing on business. So we had a big emphasis on this game. We had to get it together to be able to get our playoff run that we want. This is a step in the right direction. We did need this. We talked about how we need this one more than they do. Uh, they're going to feel the same way, and one of us is going to have to uh, assert themselves a little bit in this one. The Freeport Pretzels are having a great season. They were 8-3 and three in the conference coming into their home game tonight against Hananiga. Kalel Sims in transition here. He's going to go with a little juke move and drains the step back three. The Pretzels were feeling pretty salty tonight, folks, and so was Sims. Here he goes and drops another triple, that one from the corner. Now off the inbound, Sims to Diedrich Macon, who goes in for the reverse. My goodness, this guy. One more look at it because number five is a baller. Brayden Olsen answers on the other end from mid-range. Freeport led by nine to start the fourth. Casey on Moorhead cuts through the lane and finishes at the rim for another pretzels bucket. Caleb Hart, though, played well tonight for Hananiga. He goes for the floater and gets it to drop. Moorhead looks like he's going to drive here, but instead pulls up from the top of the key and sinks it. This team is pretty fun to watch, and so is Diedrich Macon, of course. He's going to go end-to-end -end here, finish it with the Euro step. But the way this game ended might have been even more fun than that. The Pretzels with a wide-open man down court. Jaden Marion goes for the two-handed slam. What a night for the Pretzels. They beat Hananiga 71-61 and are now 9-3 in the Nick 10. Well, Belvedere knocked off Boylan Wednesday for its first conference win of the season. Could the Bucks build on that tonight? They took on the crosstown rivals, Belvedere North. Blue Thunder's Brayden Brown can really shoot the three ball. He's on target. Brandon West for the Bucks. A little crossover move. Drive, stops. Oh, nice hesitation and gets it to go. Norse Adam Brown now will shoot the jumper from the free throw line and gets the bounce. The Bucks answer, Brandon West keeps it on the dribble, then puts up the floater between two defenders. Well done there. The Blue Thunder, though, get the W, 51-38. to At East, the E-Rabs hosted the Jayhawks. This is always an emotional rivalry regardless of the records. Jefferson's Randy Johnson going to get it started. The first points of the night. How do you defend him when he's that close to the hoop? Jayhawks again inside of Cortez Christmas, and he's going to back his way in there, and nope, but with that length of his, he puts 
the ball right back up and in. Erab's feeling the pressure. The pickoff here by Benjamin Tyler. He'll take it the distance. He says I, we need a timeout to talk things over. Changing the momentum now. John Terry and Leach cutting down the paint. Finally gets East on the board. Leach is going to try it again because it worked the first time and it works again. Erab's mounting a rally. Kamaje Kaysen getting free underneath the bucket. There he is. He puts it away. And then Sterling Horde out to Jewel Campos Watkins behind the arc who will drain the three. Jefferson beats East 55 to 49. Nick 10 leader Guilford won again tonight big at Harlem 65 to 34. Folks, we had every intention of bringing you highlights of this game, but it was a quick game and our photographer whose first game ran late got to this one after it was over, so we apologize for that. All right, let's take a quick look, Reagan, at those updated Nick 10 boys standings. Yeah, Scott, Guilford is now 13-0 and and still with a three-game lead in the loss column. Auburn and Freeport are tied for second at 9-3. and three. Belvedere North sits in fourth place at 8-4. and four. Jefferson and Hananiga are tied fifth at 5-7. and seven. We'll have Nick 10 girls highlights in a bit, plus boys games at Lena and Pectonica. Up next, Todd Brannon gives us some insight into his Belvedere North team. The Blue Thunder are putting together the winningest season in school history. As we saw a few minutes ago, the Belvedere North boys basketball team won tonight. That gives the Blue Thunder a school record 17 wins on the season. It makes them 8-4 in the Nick 10. Eight conference wins also ties the school record. It does. So we felt this was the right time to sit down with head coach Todd Brandon and learn more about what this team has accomplished. And that starts at the beginning of the season. Take a listen. Eight and one start, maybe one of the best you've had in program history. Five and zero oh in conference play. What do you think was the key there for your guys? You know, we returned so many kids from last year, and we were in so many close games last year, and a lot of them didn't go our way. Um, but a lot of kids got experience. And we started the Thanksgiving tournament at Fred, uh, Fred Van Bleek Classic over at Auburn, faced some good competition. Uh, lost a heartbreaker the first game, but then we uh, responded and, and won the next three. You know, the kids are making plays when we needed to. Uh, last year, a lot of times, it was uh, late in the games, we weren't able to make the plays. So it's 100% on the kids. And you talk about the kids that you brought back, all five of your starters, obviously that makes a difference. Talk to me too about, you know, this group of seniors. You're obviously senior-led. What is it about the leadership of this team? I got here six years ago, and a group of seniors are kind of the first group that started with our travel uh, basketball as far as a feeder program. So I think that's clearly made a, a, a difference. Um, they've been committed. They come to everything. They work hard. We talk a lot about there's a difference between being interested and being committed, and I'm fortunate to have kids that are committed. And two, you're on track. This is about to be your winningest season in program history. What has been the difference? You know, it's the kids, you know, um, they buy in, they work, they do everything that we ask them to do. I'm fortunate I have a great staff. Um, we push the kids at the lower levels. Um, so when they get up to, you know, varsity that they're ready to go. You know, you got to have kids that, that are willing to put in the work and the time and that are skilled, you know, and that's kind of the situation we have right now. This season, things have been a little shaky at times. Some uncharacteristic losses, maybe oh, yeah. Harlem, Hananiga, those types of games. What's your message to the guys, maybe when things aren't as consistent as you know they can be? A hundred percent. Like, you know, we Hananiga beat us up and down when we went up there back in December. Um, they outplayed us. Um, you know, we showed that film and we showed the film some of our other games and looked like a completely different team. Um, last night over at Harlem, they punched us right away and we never responded. We always talk about defending and rebounding. Those things need to be constant. Sometimes you're going to hit shots, sometimes you're not. And those two games that you talked about, we didn't defend and we didn't rebound. You know, I told our guys last night, I said, uh, there's a difference, you know, you're either going to react or you're going to respond, you know, and I said, we'll know tomorrow in practice. But two guys I feel like that are always consistent for you, Braden Brown and Adam Brown. Talk to me about those two. Yeah, well, Adam Brown, um, you know, it's funny because he's so unselfish and we need him to shoot more. And he shoots up incredible percentage. And every time he shoots it, it looks like it's going in. But he's such an unselfish kid. Braden Brown has no conscience. He'll shoot from anywhere at any time and he could be, um, he could be 0 for 7. And if he's open, he's shooting it. And he has an incredible confidence about himself. And one thing about him too, he, 
and just broke the school records. All-time leader for three-pointers made in our school, and he's probably going to break the record for charges taken in a season. So you usually don't get that combination from the same kid, uh, but those, those two are certainly our scoring leaders. You're in the home stretch of the regular season. You want to be playing your best basketball. Do you think your guys are where they need to be as the postseason very quickly approaches? Yeah, no, we, we talk about that. Um, no, we're not where we need to be. Now, there's been spots during the year where we have been. You know, we were fortunate enough to beat Auburn and we didn't have Adam, you know, and, and we've had some other big wins this year, but we're just looking for that consistency, you know, and, and, and you know, the conference is too good, the regional that we're in is too good that we can't come with anything less than our best, otherwise we're probably going to be done. And you know, as well as the Blue Thunder have played, they probably expect to be doing even better this season. They just need to find that consistency, you know, as you said. Yeah, and when they are on their game, yeah. they are very, very good. But coming up in a bit, our spotlight story on Lutheran's Vontez Dent. But up next, Nick 10 girls action, including the Boylan Lady Titans taking on the Auburn Lady Knights. Well, next Friday night is the big girls rematch in the Nick 10 between Boylan and Hananiga. Yeah, that's going to be fun. The Lady Titans, though, had another big game last night, a double overtime loss at Guilford. So after that, how much gas did the Lady Titans have left in the tank tonight for a game at Auburn? Well, let's find out as we go to the castle. Boylan's Kaylee Harder is camped out in her spot. That's the corner. She's hit a bunch of those over the last few years. Harder again. Yep, sinks another one. Harder... Next, going to dump it inside to Lilia Sparza. She scored 22 points. Auburn, though, hung right there with Boylan. Olivia Brown goes inside out to Elizabeth Mueller, who cans it. Mueller again will get the ball and fire from deep. That one is good. Auburn was even with Boylan in the third quarter, but the Lady Titans won it 38-28. to we saw the Belvedere and Belvedere North boys go at it earlier. The girls also met up at Belvedere tonight. The Bucks, Maggie Sternquist drives down the baseline and goes for the reverse layup and she gets it to go. Fast break coming now. Emma Pearson to Ariana Lebo who gets the and one too. Now the Blue Thunders, Brooke Botcher spins, puts it up and gets pretty fired up after she gets the whistle as well. Then Emma Pearson steals the ball here, and she's going to go all the way to the other end by herself. The Bucks take down Belvedere at North, 59-41. to The Pecatonio boys had a heck of a game Wednesday night against Byron. They just lost it at the buzzer. The Indians had 48 hours to shake that off. They were back on the court tonight. Taylor Castro covered that game. She joins us now. Hi, Taylor. Hi guys, Pecatonica has a stretch of big conference games to play now in the NUIC. They have Duran, Dakota, and Lena Winslow all coming up, so three good teams. Tonight they hosted another conference rival, Pearl City. The Indians looking to bounce back tonight. Ethan Petta for Pearl City nails this jumper to tack on two for the Wolves. Pecatonica's Grant Hagemeyer responds from outside the arc. He's back at the same spot just a possession later. This one misses, but Hagemeyer's there to rebound his own shot and lay it in. Talk about some hustle. The Indians moving the ball fast now. Jackson Diedrich with two off the bounce pass. Now, I don't know if it's raining more outside tonight or in the Pecatonica gym, thanks to this guy. Drew Williams hits from the corner, and why not one more from the same spot? Williams finished with 22 points for the Indians. Back in that corner again, this time it'll be Mason Peterson. And of course, he'll drain the three. Pearl City trying to stay in this one, Lane Kempel from downtown. Kempel again, driving right through the middle for two more, and he'll get the and one. Peterson with the steal, and Pecatonica stays hot. Now, how else are we gonna end the half but with another three-pointer? Joshua Jennings splashes this one for the Indians. They'll take an 18-point lead into the break and keep rolling in the second half. Pecatonica beats Pearl City 78-45. With the win, Pecatonica is now 5-0 in conference play. Overall, the Indians have won 19 games. Reagan and Scott. All right, thanks, Taylor. Here's another good matchup in the NUIC. Dakota at Lena Winslow. The Panthers started off strong, and so did Mason Speedall. A nice finish off the glass for the first points of the game. 
Austin Stuckey will answer from three. And then Stuckey fires again from way downtown and knocks it through for three more. He put up 15 tonight. Stuckey finds Braxton Niedermeyer down low, and that's another bucket for the Indians. Now Miles Mahone drives the baseline and banks in the jumper. He led Lena with 19 points. And how about this to end the first quarter? Jalen Rakowska comes in with the block. Speedall grabs it. He goes coast to coast and lays it in at the buzzer. That got the Panther Den on their feet. Then it'll be Speedall again. He gets the feet inside, goes up to the rim, and one for the three-point play. It was a pretty back and forth first half, but Lena pulled away to beat Dakota 53 to 37. Up next, it's our Overtime Spotlight segment. We'll meet a young man who's been a huge part of an incredible run of basketball success at Rockford Lutheran, senior Vontez Dent. What a run Rockford Lutheran's basketball team has been on. The Crusaders went 16-0 three years ago during the COVID season. They reached the Super Sectionals the last two years. They're racking up wins again this season, and they had that amazing 43-game Big Northern Conference winning streak. Senior Vontez Dent has been a part of all of that, so tonight we shine our overtime spotlight on him. It's brought to you by Benchmark Exteriors. I could talk about Vontez all day long. Lutheran head coach Tom Goosey has had a front row seat watching Vontez Dent for four straight varsity seasons. He's witnessed a rare player, a 6'4 young man who has the size and the skill set to be able to do it all on the court. He's a scorer. He can score in any way. If he's got the size difference on you, he'll post you up. He's quick, so he can beat you off the dribble if he's on the perimeter. And then you don't want to leave him open because he can shoot the three. He's, he's a complete offensive player, and, and that goes for on the defensive end. He's, he's got a motor on him. Because of his size and quickness, Dent can defend any position in high school basketball, one through five. I feel like I can play any position, really, like wherever, I need it, wherever I'm needed on the court. Here's a prime example of what Dent can do. In a game in early December against a good Northridge prep team, Dent scored 36 points. He grabbed 17 rebounds, dished out seven assists, shot 68% from the field, and he didn't commit to single turnover. I mean, what was that like watching that performance? Get out of the way. <laughs> Just get out of the way. He, he, he was uh, extremely good. Coach Will Ray from Northridge Prep. Um, you know, just shaking his head at me after the game because I, I, we couldn't stop him. I'm like, no, he, he was really good. And, and the thing with Vontez, when he doesn't care about those numbers, he is the ultimate teammate. It's all about the team winning. In past years, Dent was in the shadows of other great Lutheran players like Walt Hill Jr., Tyler Penny, Garrett Bertrand, and Zach Darris. Now he's clearly the man. At first, it was something I had to get used to, but yeah, I'm definitely comfortable now. Dent has gone from playing off the ball the last couple seasons to now having the offense run through him. That works especially well because Goosey says Dent understands the game of basketball. He's like another coach on the floor, and, and he's calling sets during the middle of a game. When he sees something that, that he knows that we can score on, he'll call it. You know, he understands what, how teams are trying to defend, and he knows what our counters are offensively and he makes those calls on the runs. Do you feel like uh, there is a little bit of a coach inside of Vontez then? Yeah, definitely. I just feel like that comes with my natural leadership. Yeah, I do call out plays sometimes that I think will work when I notice something. Earlier this season, Dent scored his 1,000th career point. He immediately gave a big hug to his mother, Lisa. It was a special moment. It meant the world to me. Cause you know my mom, she's just I do I really play every day for her. Like she's been she's been by my side all my life. You know without having my father around. Dent's father passed away when Dent was very young. Dent credits his two older brothers, Xavier and Zarius, with being positive male role models for him. One's 25 right now and one's 21, so it's like an eight-year and four-year difference. So they've just been great father figures for me growing up. You know I've always like looked up to them. A couple more things that are impressive about Dent. He has a 3.9 grade point average, and he's not only king of the court for Rockford Lutheran, he was also the school's homecoming king last fall. What did that mean to you when your classmates voted you homecoming king? It honestly meant a lot. It, it, just, it just really shows like how everybody views me as a person and like their perspective on me. I feel like they just think that I'm like a, a great guy, and I don't know, they, they just, I don't really know. It was just, it was just great though. 
And here's something most people, including Dent's classmates, probably don't know about him. Vontez is his middle name. His first name is Lewis. His brother's first names are also Lewis. They're all How named after that? their late father, but they all yeah. go by their middle names to avoid confusion. So. Yeah, great stuff, Scott. One other thing we should point out about Vontez, too, he also went to state in track and field last year in the triple jump. So, and you know, he finished in second, of course. Great athlete all around. We'll be right back after one final timeout. It's that time of the night where we bring you the best highlight captured on our cameras this week. It is the Napleton Auto Group Play of the Week. We are going to go back to Wednesday night in the Byron Pecatonica game. Game tied under 10 seconds to play. Peck's going to go for the win. The shot on its way is going to be short, but the ball's grabbed by Jack Hively. He slings it to Carson Boozer, and Boozer in a nick of time beat the buzzer to score for Byron. That gave Byron the 57-55 win, keeping the Tigers undefeated. That's the Napleton Auto Group Play of the Week. Hey guys, be sure to join us every Friday night at 11 o'clock here on Fox 39 for Overtime. You can also find this show and highlights of individual games anytime, 24-7 on our website, mystateline.com. Well, that was a fun one and that will do it for this show. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Good night and enjoy your weekend.